Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Subscriber Designs. Just the normal version today. I do these occasionally still, but not as frequently as Fighter Jet Showdown. But yes, and being Subscriber Designs, we're starting with the obligatory VTOL. This comes to me from Bennett, and it is called the Hummingbird. It's a nice looking VTOL, it's fairly conventional, but it uses, instead of using afterburning engines, it uses Weasley engines at the bottom. So anyway, let's try and take this off if I get the action groups right and land it on the VAB. The true test of any good VTOL. Alright, come on, let's go. Is it going to take off, do you suppose? Maybe. There we go, alright. And then main engines are one. Uh, there we go. I can do afterburners on them, but I don't think I'm gonna, because I don't need to be going that fast. Um, and you can close the cargo bay, but I'm not gonna do that either, because I don't need to. All right, um, I should probably take those brakes down for now, just so we can get over there a little more quickly, and then brake, and then maybe land. My skill at landing on the VAB has gotten pretty bad recently. I've, I've uh, in the last few episodes, I've done a pretty poor job of landing on the VAB, um, which, you know, is a bit of a shame, but I, I don't do it frequently enough anymore. <laughs> Alright, anyway, pull up, throttle up, slow down, and gonna slow, and, ooh, ooh, nice, right, tilt that way a bit, and come down on the ellie pad, oh, oh shit, oh gee, oh gee, oh jeez, yeah, this is gonna be real bad. <laughs> Um, maybe I should loop back around. Nope, nope, I'm committed now, apparently. Okay, and back up. And, oh, we're gonna nail this. Well, I'm gonna nail this. You're doing nothing. You're so... You, what are you even doing? You, you're not even helping. <laughs> God damn it, viewer. Why can't you travel into the past, find where I live, and then help me land this VTOL? Actually, don't do that, because you'd all come back to the same point, and you'd just fill up my house, and it would be really annoying. All right, we landed on the VAB, fuck yeah! Uh, we only broke it a little bit! Fuck ya! <laughs> so thank you to Bennett for the VTOL. It, it was actually pretty good to fly. I'm a little squirrely, but you know, it landed on the VAB, and yeah, good job. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So the next thing we're looking at, just another kind of small thing. It is a plane, and it comes to me from Eric. And this is a BF, uh, no, a BV-141 uh, World War II German, um, German recon aircraft, apparently. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, um, well, the reason I like this so much is it's asymmetrical. I really do like asymmetrical planes. So it's got its, uh, got its command module and everything right here with some guns. And it's got, uh, got itself just its boom over there with its engine. So when it takes off, actually, it starts to squirrel a little bit. It starts to turn a little bit to the right. But once it's in the air, it's very stable. Um, it's designed quite nicely. I do like these kind of, uh, ooh, shit. Um, <laughs> see, now we're in the air. It uh, flies pretty well. Um, yeah, I do like uh, what's it? Asymmetrical aircraft, um, and it's really cool. Yeah, so this flies pretty nicely. It does have some guns on it. It has the standard BD Armory 50 cal's, and yeah, apparently it's a reconnaissance aircraft. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. That's uh, not much to say about it. I'm just gonna fly it around, shoot some stuff, and it's using this nice airplane plus cockpit, so you get a pretty good uh, pretty good view. Um, which actually looks a little bit helicoptery, but it does fit the design quite uh, quite nicely. Um, so yeah, you can fly it around, you can shoot some stuff, and yeah, it flies pretty well actually. Once I find with planes and KSP, um, once you're just kind of flying, you can you can do some pretty crazy stuff. Like you can have asymmetrical aircraft, you can be missing wings, you know. As long as you just sort of yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm in Fort Kerbin. Uh, one of my uh, one of my fighters had its wings shut off and kept flying because you know f flying magic. I don't quite understand it, but it seems once something's in the air, it'll just fly. You know, um, like the F-15 in real life lost a wing, kept flying. You don't even need wings on aircraft. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. But yeah, there's not much more to say about this other than it's pretty cool. I like how it looks. And uh, yeah, thank you to Eric for sending me this. And now let's move on to the really big thing, and I mean that in every sense of the word of this video. So the next craft we're looking at comes to me from Arif, and it is described as another computer melter. And yes it is, this is the battleship Princeton, and it is an entirely stock battleship in Kerbal Space Program. It's actually probably much more than a battleship, maybe a, you know, light cruiser or a frigate or something. But still, you couldn't build it much bigger, this is about 1600 parts, and it is beautiful. You can see that the whole hull is made out of these wing surface pieces, and 
just kind of beautifully sculpted down this end especially it kind of curves upward and it's just it's very nice and it does move I'm not going to do that because of the lag and it has a bunch of missiles um, and a very beautiful superstructure you can see we've got the uh, you've got the bridge up here you got various communication-y looking things you got yourself a steam tunnel um, a steam funnel not a steam tunnel and a little bit of something at the back, more superstructure. And yeah, it's just a really awesome... Ooh, it looks like you can actually walk inside here. Oh, that's nice. Wow, you actually can. That's really cool. Um, yeah, so anyway. Um, and what else have we... Yeah, so the missiles. Let's take a look at the missiles. They're pretty cool. So on the sides, we have two... Uh, they look like long-range cruise missiles. They're jet-based and have some boosters to take off. Um, so those would be for assaulting something far away. And then we've also got some uh, smaller, well, bigger um, rocket-powered missiles, which are probably for more kind of, you know, a closer range and quicker acting, um, that sort of thing. And yeah, we've got the same as them on the front. I think those are the same as the ones at the back. And they're pretty cool. So how do these missiles work? Well, they actually work pretty well. Um, but KSP, obviously being KSP, makes switching to missiles quite difficult. But we are going to try this a few times. So we're going to decouple this uh, missile right here. Um, and... Yeah. Are we good? Are we... Are we... Oh, I've just noticed actually up near the bridge is a little balcony bit where you can come and stand. This is really cool. Thank you so much to Ara for this. This is awesome. Also has some lights. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, let's do the missile. Alright, so we'll switch to the missile. Um, so now it's on our little rail. You can see it can kind of... Hmm. Oh no, I've switched to the decoupler. Um, you can see it can kind of go up and down. I think the intention is that it would be able to tilt, but uh, I don't think it can actually do that. Um, also, the struts of state. How did you do that? The struts... This is two separate craft now, but the struts still hold this one to this one? Or are these... No, this must just be part of the craft, right? And then this must... Yeah, okay, I thought... Yeah, no, this is two different craft right here. All right, okay. And then we lock SAS, we're going to throttle up, and then we have to juggle some s switching. So if I hit that button, it'll go. And then I switch to that, and then that. There we go. And now we're into the air. I have to tilt up quite severely because it doesn't have a great thrust weight ratio, but it will now take off. So it actually works pretty well. You can see it kind of fl flies along the rail. And now we've got a functioning stock missile, which is quite nice. Uh, pretty, pretty, yeah. It's It's got the wings that helps it turn and things, and probably helps it glide a little bit, but probably not a ton. But yeah, KSP does lend itself to building missiles. I mean, that's technically what we're doing all the time when we're building our big space rockets. Um, those are just intercontinental ballistic missiles where we change the uh, nuclear payload for something useful. Um, anyway, let's try, let's try and hit the ship with the missile, I guess. I didn't put anything else out here because there's so much lag. It's kind of hard to turn these missiles around. You've got to do it kind of slowly, but I'm just going to try and point the other way and hope that that works. Um, yeah. Interestingly, actually, about the whole uh, missile thing, it's just really hard for foreigners to get jobs at places like SpaceX because technically they're working on advanced weapons technologies. So, like, you know, I'd probably never be able to get a job at SpaceX. Not that I'd want to, because, you know, it's actually really hard to work for Musk. Like, I see a lot of comments like, oh, my God, employ me at Tesla or whatever. It's like, oh, man, you Musk's kind of an asshole. Like, I love him, but, uh, you know, he's probably not actually very much fun to work for, like... You have to give your life to that company. <laughs> and maybe that sounds good, and maybe you're that kind of person, but you know, I gotta go home sometimes. <laughs> anyway, enough talking about the benefits of working for Elon Musk. Let's try and aim this at the ship. It's go, okay, we've got it coming in. Um, just gotta make sure it hits the ship, not the water. Um, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna? No, we're not. Oh, pull up! Oh, I missed. Oh well, we have another thing about attacking that ship in a bit. Uh, let's try one of the cruise missiles and then we'll move on to the next thing we're going to do with the ship, um, which is also going to be pretty fun. Alright, we'll decouple that. De decouple, bro. There we go. Oh, the lag, the lag is palpable. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll switch to uh, this guy. That's the decoupler, we'll switch to this guy. And this is a cruise missile, so we'll just do the same. Uh, takes off with boosters. Um, we'll just combine all of these into one stage. Um, like this. And then... Oh my god. Oh shit. There we go. Oh, switch to it just in time. The boosters actually make it take off much nicer than the other uh, missiles. 
and then it'll get right into the air and uh, yeah we've got ourselves a pretty effective cruise missile this is how a lot of cruise missiles would take off with kind of a almost like a i think they do use solid rocket boosters occasionally to uh make them take off quite quickly and then they'll just glide and yeah this will work pretty well i might try and hit the ship with this as well because i'm kind of sad that my last one failed and this one might be slightly easier to do um, we're gonna get further away turn around hit the ship um but then after this i've stripped the ship of weapons to get parts down and we're going to attack it with a plane um, <laughs> I think the only armed plane I have, though, is the recon plane, so uh, that's what's going to happen, I guess. Um, how, how modern is this ship? I don't know. If, I don't think it's based on a real ship. Oh, fuck, I've overturned. Oh, God. Oh, this is not like a plane. Oh, this flies like a missile. <laughs> Probably should expect that while flying a missile. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Oh, dude, it is, yeah, hard to turn, but it is it's coming. It's, it's doing its job. Uh, yeah, no, this, I have to say that this ship does just look beautiful. I'm, it's sad that I'm blowing it up, but uh, I doubt these missiles still will destroy it too much. Um, but yeah, that that's some serious commitment. Like, I've built some pretty crazy things, but when it when it gets to, like, the pernickety making things look beautiful, it's that's not where I shine, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big fan of just building things that are functional-ish. Um, that's what my the tagline for my channel should be called, functional-ish. Um, Alright, now we've lined up. I think this probably provides more thrust than those little engines in the lower atmosphere. So, uh, yeah, it just takes a little while to throttle up, so is isn't great for a very quick-acting missile. Alright, we're going to hopefully hit this right in the deck. I think that's where you want to hit a ship. Um, I've always maintained you should hit it in the guns, because then it doesn't have guns. But I think there's probably flaws to that. Probably pretty hard to hit a gun with a round from like two kilometers away. And oh, yes! Oh wow, we really got it. We really hit it. I think it may have like clipped through, but uh, there's some explosions. Yeah, it, it went through the thing and just kind of... It looks like it blew up some internals. Yeah, we probably killed some innocent sailors. Okay, I'm happy with that. Oh yeah, they're underwater now. Yeah, it's like the Titanic under here. Oh, yeah. Alright. Anyway, let's go and shoot this with a plane, shall we? So the plane I've picked to uh, shoot the ship with actually isn't the uh, the um, recon plane from earlier. I thought that would be harder to fly given to it uh, due to its asymmetrical nature. But um, I did receive this craft from uh, Bubblegum One Ninety called the Confused Pigeon, and it's 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 interesting. It's kind of uh, I think it's supposed to be um, like a prop plane, but in stock KSP where there aren't props, so it uses a reversed Weasley engine at the front. And yeah, I just strapped a couple of 50 cals to it, and uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it seems like, uh, oh, there is something about, um, something about the engine in the uh, email. Uh, it's something about using the engine in reverse, sounds stupid and KSP, an interesting idea which, uh, after many hours of YouTube, I've not seen done. Uh, oh yeah, I think I have seen this um, before, but uh, I think it is quite cool. I do like the um, kind of forward-pulling jet engine. Um, it would be pretty horrible in real life having the jet blast kind of over your cockpit, but you know. Anyway, yeah, so this is, yeah, like I said, this is from Bubblegum 190. It's a pretty nice plane. Um, I had been looking at it. Hadn't figured out what to do with it, but it should be a pretty good carrier for a couple of 50 cals to go and fuck up this uh, boat, which has no missiles on it now. Um, we took them off because that reduces the part count by, I think, about 300. So, yeah. Annoyingly, I have no mouse aim flight mod, so strafing is going to be a touch difficult, but uh, we should be fine. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've strafed stuff before, although I think always with mouse aim flight mod, otherwise it's been incredibly unsuccessful. So, yeah, you can see how... Ooh, yeah, maybe this wasn't the right craft. It's a bit rolly. Um, okay, I've got to sort these control surfaces out. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Um... And these should just be, this should be for nothing. Um, these should just be for roll. Yeah. Something you, most people don't do, but it, it does make planes fly a lot nicer if you do this. Um, just like have each control surface just do one thing. Just makes it roll a little nicer, makes it fly a little nicer. Actually, that might roll a little too much even, so we're going to get rid of that has that. That's nice. Okay, yeah, little lesson in uh, little lesson in Kerbal Space Program plane building. Just uh, just have each control surface do one thing. Makes it less squirrely. Makes it less confused. And yeah, all right. So that's set up. Um, and now we're gonna turn it around. Probably gonna try and do the loop. Oh shit! I didn't throttle up. We are gonna fail this loop. Um, <laughs> we're gonna try and shoot a ship. Let's go shoot the ship. Like shooting the ship, but with murder. 
Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Roll inverted. Now we're in. Roll inverted? More pitch inverted. I, I pitched and now I'm inverted. So would that be co called pitching inverted? It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just shoot the ship. All right. Come on. Okay. Yeah, this is difficult without my same flight mod and with the lag. Um, ooh. There you go. KSP's recon- no, BD Armory's recognized I am trying to shoot it. If this doesn't work, of course, I'll just strap like a 30mm gorse cannon to the front and then we'll do it with that. But hopefully the overpowered BD Armory 50 should rip it apart. Although BD Armory has been balanced a little bit recently, which is annoying. Oh, I can see some deck exploding. Yeah, we're stunned to fuck this up. If I can just rip off the front, I just want to- oh wow, yeah, there's going to be a lag explosion. And it looks like the ship is dead. Obviously, mostly aesthetic, that ship, because it's built out of wing surfaces. Although it was pretty tough, it did have quite a lot of metal in there. But as you can see, when you rip it apart with some BD Armory 50s, not much, uh, not much to be done. Obviously, it was also built to be stock, so it would stand up to a lot of stock missile attack. Now oh, the plane just buzzed us. That was cool. Um, but yeah, you can see once you load it up with some uh, 50s, I just wanted to see it kind of crumpled. I like when complicated things break. It's just fun to see the damage. You can see the strafing just kind of ripped right right through there. Actually pulled off that superstructure. Um, seems to have cut off something there and then also ripped up the back. Um, pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, this has just been a bit of a, I was going to say a short, shorter episode, but it wasn't because uh, I did more things than I thought I would. But yeah, it's it's been a little fun. And I do like doing these normal subscribe designs things because you just get to see some really cool, interesting craft. And uh, yeah, so thank you to everyone who sent me craft today, especially for this ship. This was really cool. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.